Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Um, I would like to add my congratulations to uh, Gaurav, Ritu, and Sashin um, for all the work they've done. Uh, 12th year of Franchise India. Um, I believe, uh, as Ritu mentioned, it's about the seventh or eighth year of licensing within uh, the Indian marketplace. Uh, and they've done a lot to help build both those businesses. Licensing is a uh, a cousin of franchising. It's a slightly different business form, um, which has shown great success worldwide. And uh, we look forward to seeing this business grow by leaps and bounds in the Indian marketplace. Um, the theme of this session is about entrepreneurship. And uh, licensing is a business of entrepreneurs. When I sit in my office in New York, uh, when I speak to people from around the world, uh, several of us from the licensing business uh, this week have just come from London for the, from the Brand Licensing Europe show. Um, it's filled with entrepreneurs uh, because what it takes is an idea. It takes business savvy. It takes execution to make something grow. And uh, if I could uh, ask that uh, my slides be put up on the screen, it would be a big help. Okay, I'm going to begin my remarks with a few numbers, but the numbers are really not what I want to talk about. Uh, but this is just to give you some perspective. Uh, the licensing business worldwide, it's about $195 billion US at retail. Uh, about two thirds of that is done in the US and Canada. Um, and you see some of the other top markets over here. Uh, it gives you an idea of the scale of what goes on. Um, it's, licensing is not an industry unto itself, uh, despite the fact that the word industry appears in my organization's name. It's not an industry unto itself. It's a tool. It's a marketing tool. It's a brand extension tool. It's a brand enhancement tool um, that can let you take an idea from something small and you know a, a, a germinating seed and make it grow and flourish into uh, something much larger. Uh, I think it should not be lost on anybody in this room. Walt Disney was an entrepreneur at one point. He was a very small businessman with an idea, and we all know what that's grown into. Now, India is at the bottom end of the scale. Projected 2014 retail sales of licensed goods in India, 450 million. It's a very, very tiny part of the global marketplace. Uh, but it shows a lot of growth over the past few years. Uh, so it's a very young business here. It's growing here. Um, you see 25 to 30% year-on-year growth just in the kids' license sector. Uh, you see a, but still, the $450 million this year is a, is a tiny part of the overall Indian uh, retail marketplace estimated at $490 billion. Um, an important point that was uh, raised earlier, the growth of the organized sector. That's a very key element for the licensing business, both for the global companies and for Indian companies. Uh, there has to be a way, in an organized way, to get goods to consumers. And the organized retail sector is really will play a key role in that. And uh, we're very encouraged to see that growing uh, going forward. Now, what are we talking about when we say licensing? And here up on the screen is a defi one definition. And there are lots of definitions out there. Uh, you can read it. Um, it's the kind of definition that was probably written by an attorney. Um, and attorneys are a big part of this business. Uh, but it talks about the prop you know, the leasing a legally protected entity um, and you see the examples of what we're talking about here. But that leaves out a very, very key element of what this idea, the entrepreneurial idea. It's all really about emotion. A brand, whether it's a franchise brand, a licensed brand, or a, any kind of packaged goods brand, what is a brand? And, and you know, entire year-long courses are taught on this subject alone. What is the definition of a brand? Um, you, you can have lots of different definitions, but at the core of any of them, and we're talking about animated characters, we're talking about sports logos, we're talking about artwork, we're talking about fashion design, we're talking about characters. It all comes down to 
what does that piece of intellectual property inspire in somebody? For a classic brand, it might be trust. It might be familiarity. For a New York Yankees logo, it might be Americana. It might be, gee, I think that's a really cool logo. For a character, it might be a sense of humor. For a piece of artwork, it's appreciation of the design. But if you don't have that emotion that ties into, that ties the consumer and attracts the consumer, you really don't have anything. There's no reason for a licensee, for a manufacturer to want to take the license. There's no reason for a retailer to want to carry it. Uh, so really, despite all the legalisms, and legal is a huge part of this business, um, as those attending the brand uh, uh, licensing sessions will see, um, it really isn't the core of it. So it is a business of entrepreneurs. It's about who can inspire those kinds of emotions to make a consumer want to have those goods or want to um, partake in those services. So that's a really, really important aspect of it. Uh, everybody knows about the entertainment business you know, and licensing. That's pretty obvious, whether it's Mickey Mouse or Chota Beam. Uh, there, there are countless, countless examples around the world, but it's not the only part of the business. As a matter of fact, it's less than half the business. Corporate brands, basically invisible to the consumer in, in a licensing sense, it's a huge part of the business. Fashion, sports. Um, if you put sports and collegiate licensing together, and these are U.S. numbers, and, and the, the numbers will vary from country to country around the world, uh, but these are U.S. numbers, and they're, they're pretty consistent year to year. Um, collegiate is really based on sports, so you take that, that's almost the th it is the third largest category together if you take them. One of the fun parts of this business, and I really became involved in the licensing business about 20 years ago, first as a journalist, uh, covering it, um, is that many of the big, biggest successes have come in, as they say, under the radar. Um, Spider-Man, a few years ago, was a very minor character within the Marvel Entertainment um, library. They decided to make a movie on it. They made a very good movie. Um, which is a very key element. If it had been a bad movie, you would not have seen Spider-Man 2, Spider-Man 3, and so on and so forth. Uh, we talk about franchises within, within the business, and unless the story and the execution are good, Rod talked about quality. Um, quality is really the differentiating point for anybody in any of these businesses, whether it's franchising or anything else. Uh, so really the, the magic comes when the unanticipated hit comes. If I had been standing here a year ago, nobody in this room would ever have heard of the movie Frozen, which, became, which has become one of the biggest international hits, surprising everybody. And that includes Disney, which made the film and is now marketing the film and, and reaping the benefits of it. It surprised Disney to the extent that really, by all rights, a movie that opened last November uh, in its first markets uh, should have been a major, major licensing success last year. Well, guess what? Nobody was ready for it. So really, the big business is coming this year. And it's expected to be, for the, for the Christmas holidays around the world, expected to be one of the biggest properties. So even the biggest, most savvy companies in this business can have unexpected successes. Now, it's more fun when the small entrepreneur has the big success, because that's a, that's a wonderful thing. Um, Rovio, the, the uh, originators of Angry Birds, came out of nowhere. But they had a great story to tell. They had great characters. And they were able to make the right business decisions to make it work. Creativity has no borders. That's the best part of this business. Rovio is from Finland. Obviously, you've, you have things like Peppa Pig coming from the UK. You had Pokemon and Doraemon and Domo coming from Japan. Where the creative spirit lives, that's where the next successes are going to come from. And whether it's India, which has a very fine animation industry uh, and lots of very, very creative people, 
there's no reason that those next big international successes can't come from here. So uh, I think the, the, um, the theme of entrepreneurship is very, very appropriate for those of us in the licensing business. So with that, I'd like to thank you. Have a great show. Come out with lots of ideas. Uh, and we look forward to seeing you in the next couple of days. Thank you.